I'm Ryan Hall. I'm Hayden Davenport. And this is your Charger Report for October 3rd. Hi, I'm Samantha Coyle. And I'm Daniel Hearn. Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Adrian. I'm David Smith. And I'm James Bozard. I'm Noah Brock. And I'm Sam Druid. I'm Grant. And I'm Kristen. Uh, I'm Justin. And I'm Taylor. I'm TJ Cornell. And I'm Mackenzie Gordon. I'm Travis Elkins. And I'm Andrew Follow. Hi, I'm Nicole. This is Christy. And I'm Mike. I'm Wes. I'm Kayla. And I'm Adam. And this is your Charger Report. 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 And this is your Charger Report Action News. And this is your Charger Report. Welcome to the Charger Report. And this is your Charger Report. And this is your Charger Report. This is the Charger Report. And this is your Charger's Report. And this is your Charger Report. And this is your Charger Report. First up, some national and world news. Bodies found dead on Japan's Mount Antake. After a volcanic eruption, many bodies were found dead due to the cause. A total of 36 to be exact. 24 bodies still remain on the mountain, while 12 have been recovered. Further search for missing hikers has been suspended due to dangerous conditions. Why is everybody moving to Texas? More Americans moved to Texas in recent years than any other state, a net gain of more than 387,000 in the latest census for 2013. Why, you may ask? Well, jobs are the number one reason for population moves, with affordable housing as a close second. Netflix lands its first major film premiere, Mark August 28, 2015, on your calendar. It will be a history-making day for Hollywood. On that date, Netflix will premiere a feature film, the sequel to the 2000 hit, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, at the same time moviegoers can see it in theaters. Ofi officials say Finch Jumper made it into the White House. The man who jumped the White House fence earlier this month and breached the mansion's doors actually made it farther than originally thought. Omar Gonzalez overcame one Secret Service officer and ran into the East Room of the White House, where he was then subdued. And now off to Jacob with the weather. Thanks guys. This weekend looks like it'll be a little bit cooler with highs in the lower 70s and it'll get about in the 40s at night. The humidity will be low and we'll have a steady southwest wind at about 14 miles an hour. But next week is where it's going to get a little bit interesting. On Monday, it looks as if we're going to have a volcanic eruption in Louisville. Temperatures will reach around 300 degrees in the city and 200 degrees in the surrounding areas. And this will continue into about Tuesday evening. All right, I'm getting word that on Wednesday we're going to have a tropical storm. The rest of your week's looking good, though. It'll be in the lower 80s and the higher 60s. So Monday and Tuesday, volcanic eruption. Wednesday, tropical storm. And the rest of your week looks beautiful. So get out there and enjoy that weather, Chargers. Back to you guys. Awesome weather. And now time for some school news. I need your undivided attention for this one. We need everyone's help. Mr. Rock has lost his window. It disappeared about three weeks ago. It's a madhouse in there, kids walking in and out of the window like it's a barn. Mr. Rock seems to really miss his window between all the noise that is created in the halls when the broadcasting students record the news. Anyways, we really need to find this window. If you have any news of its whereabouts, please inform Mr. Rock. He misses his dear window. Whatever good or bad, we all have an opinion on the houses that we are put in. But this year, things are supposed to be different. Instead of only teachers being in charge, student body government has taken over and planned making quite a bit of changes to make a smoother flow. We also plan on meeting a whole lot more this year for a shorter period of time. We have adopted the, this way of organizing and promoting school synergy from many private schools in the area. All right, Chargers, it's about time for us to show our respect and appreciation to our country's veterans. Like every year on Veterans Day, we will be having an assembly in honor of those that have served. 
this year they would like if you would sign up any veterans in your family so that we can honor them and their sacrifices in a proper way. Also, another big event that our school puts on annually is Halloween in the Halls. The idea is that a child brings in a canned good and they get to walk through our halls as students hand out candy to the children. Last year, we ran out of candy before half the kids made it through the halls. So please bring in as much candy as possible and get points for your house. And now on to your Phil Report with Sam and John. Last year, Bullet East created houses in an attempt to help students come together as a school and bond with one another. This idea has been used throughout other schools such as Trinity and DeSales and been proved successful. Today, Sam and I went out to see what students around our school thought about houses. Crossy. And what is your opinion on houses? Um, I love houses, personally. I think that any student would be able to tell you that. I think that houses give students a voice. Um, they allow people to get involved that are maybe don't play a sport or are not involved in anything else. Um, it, bring, it unites the school. It brings teachers and students and faculty and administration all um, together. I'm here with Jared Melton. All right, Jared, so uh, how do you feel about houses? Uh, I don't like them personally. I don't think they're very fun. All right, I'm here with Alex Elkins. Alex, how do you feel about the house system in the school? Um, I think it's pointless. Why do you think it's pointless? Uh, because I just don't think anybody cares about it. I'm here with Kevin. And what do you think about the house system here at Bullet East? I think it's a very productive system. You know, we can get to know each other better and be more of a family and have more charger pride. How do you think they can be improved this year? Uh, houses are going to be very improved this year, I hope. Um, our goal is to bring in a lot more competition and um, a lot more house time. Not so much homeroom time, but full house. So all the PC house would be together. All the Augmentum house would be together um, on a more regular basis so that students can get to know each other um, and can start coming up with good ideas that we can do as a house. Maybe have some funner activities instead of the stupid stuff that we do. Get rid of it. What do you think about the attitude of different people around the school? Uh, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, I think that the attitude, I, don't, I know that the attitude is somewhat negative um, at this current moment, but I also know that that is because we made some decisions last year that didn't work out so great. Um, putting students in homerooms we know didn't work. Um, so I've told my kids this is a trial and error thing. Um, we know it didn't work. We're not doing it again this year. Um, so we're just going to kind of take what we've learned and, and go with it. Um, I Also, my challenge, I've told all my classes, my challenge is for kids to just give it a chance and be positive about it because you can't implement a program to 1,500 kids and expect it to take off the first year. It will probably take three to four years until it's 100% solid. I think the only people that actually like care about it are the student body government. Uh, yes, but try not to let it get to me or any other people in my house. Uh, I feel like, you know, it could be something that everybody can get involved with if nobody's in a club or a sport. You don't have to be an athlete or be anything special to be in this in the, the houses, so something that everybody can do. Stay tuned for upcoming house events. We've got Halloween in the halls in October, um, hall decorating in November, and houses for the holidays in December. It's going to be a great time. Hello, this is Austin. And this is Connor. And we're here with the school calendar. Starting off on the 4th, there's a cross country meet. It's uh, the Greater Louisville Ranks at EP Sawyer Park in Louisville. The 6th, there's a JV football game at Bullet Central. The 7th through the 8th is the Girls State Golf Tournament. The 9th, there's a freshman football game versus Bullet Central at Bullet Central. Um, the 10th, there's a varsity football game versus Bullet Central, and that's at Bullet Central. The 11th, there's a cross country meet at Yellow Creek Park in Owensboro. Uh, the 14th, there's a cross country meet, and that is the Bullet County Championship. The 16th, there's a freshman JV and varsity volleyball game at North Bullet. And ending up the month, the 17th, is the varsity football game versus North Bullet at Bullet East. Now over to Jacob with some plugged in news.
Jacob Moore here about to plug in with some plugged in. <laughs> if Steve Jobs had things his way, things would be a lot different, like a lot different. iPhones would still be really, really small. The iPad would still be big. The Macintosh would be named the bicycle because it works out your mind, apparently. And it would be named Sony. It would be named by Sony and made by Sony. His kids cannot use Apple products because he thought that they messed up your brain, but he made them because he really liked money. And Wi-Fi would be free, which would be awesome. Apple would not have a TV because he didn't like that. Safari would be named... Safari would not be named Safari, and Siri would be named anything else but Siri. The iPhone wouldn't be white. The Apple TV would be more like the Wii. And unveiled on September 30th, 2014, it was released... Uh, Windows 10 was released. It w was announced. It'll be released in late 2015. Windows 10 is going to be the next big thing. Windows 10 is an upcoming release on the <laughs> Microsoft Windows operating system. First teased in April of 2014 at the Build Conference, Windows 10 aims to address the interface first introduced by Windows 8 by adding additional mechanics designed to improve the uh, user experience. Uh, for non-touchscreen devices such as desktops, computers, and laptops. So com like computers, typey things. Including a revival of the start menu seen in Windows 7, if you remember that. A virtual desktop, a virtual desktop system and ability to run Windows store apps within Windows on the desktop rather than a full screen mode. Now back to you guys. <laughs> I'm Ryan. And I'm Seuss Cut. Stay classy, Bullities. Hi, my name's Malachi. I'm Ethan. I'm Austin. And I'm Tyler. And this is... Your Red, Red Zone, Zone Sports, Sports Report. Report. And now on to our Pro Sports Buzzer Beater. Shout, shout, let it all out. Alrighty, our first topic for today is uh, Teddy Brid Bridgewater's rise in the NFL. Will he maintain that success? Um... Last Sunday against the Falcons, Teddy Bridgewater had his first career start and had, was 19 for 30 with pass completion and had 317 yards passing and a rushing touchdown. So, in my opinion, I do think that he will be very successful in the NFL this year. Okay. Um, so, he suffered uh, an ankle sprain in the fourth quarter of that game in a scramble attempt. So, I think one of the real questions is, how is he going to come back from that? Is it going to be something simple? Is it going to be something a little more complicated? Uh, some of the x-rays have come back that it isn't very serious, but it's really going to come down to is he going to be okay to play next game and return with another good win? All in all, Teddy Bridgewater was put in a very bad predicament against a... a, a all in all, Teddy Bridgewater was put into a very bad predicament against a much improved Atlanta defense. His accuracy and patience in the pocket led them to a big victory over the Atlanta Falcons, and I do believe he will succeed in the NFL. An injury can, an injury can teach a person a lot about the game and the sport, and they can learn from it. So I think he'll, he'll be all right. And our next discussion will be Derek Jeter, and was he the best shortstop in MLB history? All right, uh, Derek Jeter. So he recently retired. Uh, he was the shortstop for the Yankees and uh, an incredible hitter. So uh, in a quote in an interview he said right after the game, I just felt like it was the right time. Uh, so he, he struck out only 17.5% of the time in his entire career. And when you compare him with all of the greats in the Yankees Hall of Fame, I think it's hard to say that he's the best ever, but he's definitely one of the greats. For me, it isn't a question whether he's the best shortstop, but if he is the greatest to ever play the game. He ranks six all-time in hits at 3,465, 1,311 RBIs, but most importantly, 
the biggest stat of anyone's career, he has five championships. Now for the Yankees team, I feel that the greatest player to ever play the sport of baseball will always be the great Bambino. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think you can get any better than the captain, Derek Jeter himself. He ended his career with a single walk-off RBI, and you can't get no much better than that. And now, over to the field report. People all over Bullity seem to be injuring themselves while playing sports that they're committed to. Today we are going to be interviewing the injured athletes at BE. Uh, Paul Eldridge with the Field Report and today we're going to be talking about injuries and how they've impacted our school lately. I'm here with, uh, with Chad Caldwell. All right, I'm uh, I'm here with the uh, Billy Jack Holiday. I'm here with Billy Jack Holiday. They're with uh, Jared Bittner. Uh, and I'm here with Justin Parsons. All right, I'm here with uh, uh, Brandon. Brandon Rogers, and I'm uh, here with uh, Morgan Terry. And Morgan. And uh, Billy Jack, what sport do you play? Football. You play football. All right. Football and I run track. Football. Football. Uh, how do you play? Uh, football. Um, what sport do you play? Cheerleading. I'm here with uh, Isaiah Boyd. Isaiah Boyd. And Isaiah, what did you? Or what sport do you play? I play football. What did you injure? I broke my leg. Was it bad? It was pretty bad. It hurt really bad? Mm, couldn't really feel it, but yeah, it kind of hurt it. And didn't you get flown to the hospital when you broke your leg? Scariest thing in my life. Scared of heights. How scary was it? I prefer to just, you feel me, I would have rather them just drove me down there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what, you, I know what he's saying. And um, how do you think it's impacted the season? Uh, I mean, I still feel like we're going to be a pretty good team, but I know, you know, certain plays that if I was in, it would probably be different, you know what I'm saying? I do know what he's saying, and uh, do you think you're going to be back? Oh, yeah, I'm going to be back for the playoffs. Are we going to win state? Yeah. Because you're going to be back for the playoffs? Yeah. Um, what did you injure? Uh, my knee. Did it hurt pretty bad? Yeah, it, like it popped and I was scared for my life, but other than that, it was not that bad. Other than that, it wasn't bad. Okay. Um, uh, what did you injure when you were playing football? My ACL meniscus. All right, did it hurt a lot? Oh yeah, hurt a lot. Can you describe the pain that went through your meniscus? I don't know, it just hurt very bad. And what did you injure, Brandon? My ankle, my right ankle. And uh, what's your injury? Um, well, it's my pinky knuckle, like my whole hand, kind of. But I don't know if it's broken yet, so. How did you do it? I got in a car wreck this weekend. Did it hurt? <laughs> yeah, really bad. How did you get injured? I had uh, Zeke Kearns. Tear my MCL. Has injuries impacted your season? Yep, can't play this year because of a broken collarbone. So you broke your collarbone? Yep. Did it hurt? Yep. How bad? Pretty bad. All right, thanks. And uh, how do you think it's impacted the season so far? Well, since it happened last Friday, Hopefully it doesn't like ruin my chances for the rest of the season. All right, all right. Um, how do you think it's impacted the season? It didn't. We're doing good. We got Meredith over here in front of us. Good. All right, all right. Uh, has it impacted the team season? I don't know. We got a tight end playing center now, so kinda. 
And how do you think that your injury has impacted our football season? Well, you know, it's hurt the line, you know, because we're real young. And I was the only one with some experience, but, you know, I think we'll rebound all right. Is it going to impact your cheerleading season? Hopefully not, um, but it might if it is broken, so I'm not sure. Yeah. So do you think that you will be back? Hopefully. Right. Are you going to be back? Yeah. North Bullet. All right, good. All right. Will you be back? Yeah. And will we be much better with you back on the team? Hope so. All right, thank you. Uh, will you be back? No. Well, that's awful. As you can see, uh, injuries have been a big problem here at Bullet East High School, and uh, hopefully less of these injuries occur in the future, and we can get all of our people back to full health. Back to you guys. And now on to our college buzzer beater. First in college sports, the main question in everybody's mind, does Florida State really deserve the number one ranking? Well, I do feel that they deserve the number one ranking. They're a great team, they work hard, and they produce the work, they produce wins. Um, I, I do not, I do not agree that Florida State deserves the number one ranking. They, um, they have played decent teams this year and barely pulled it off, such as NC State, who was up 27 at halftime against them. And I, I just don't see them being um, a, a national championship team as they were last year. It's really hard to call a number one team this early in the season when there are already so many undefeated teams, just uh, Oklahoma, Baylor, BYU, Notre Dame, to name a few. Um, really the top three teams as noted right now are FSU, Alabama, and Oregon. And I think FSU actually does deserve their number one spot because they've taken on two top 25 teams with a combined score of 114 to 14, and they have had the most impressive win so far this year against the Clemson Tigers. What do you think, Bacon? Florida State comes into week six, 103rd in the nation in rushing. They're such a one-dimensional team, and they've given up 25.3 points per game already to teams of lower caliber. Uh, I believe a team like Auburn who has a much more balanced offense and an average win of 42 to 16 is much more deserving of the number one ranking. Alrighty, our next topic will be, who do we think is going to be the most uh, intimidating of all basketball teams, of all college basketball teams this year? Um, that's, that's not even a discussion. The most intimidating team this year will be the Kentucky Wildcats. They're coming on the floor with nine McDonald's All-Americans, and there is only one NBA team this year who has that many All-Americans on there. Uh, not to mention, they have the Twins coming back, Willie Cauley-Stein, and they will have a lot more experience this year than they have in the past years, and they're looking for number nine. I'm going to have to agree with Ethan. Uh, the Kentucky Wildcats look great coming into this year, uh, led by John Calipari with the Harrison Twins and Alex Porthris coming back. I'm going to have to say that they're going to be a force to be reckoned with this year. Is this even a question? There's a possible starting lineup of six foot four, six foot four, seven foot, seven foot, and seven foot one. They're returning all but two of last year's scores. It's not even a question. Kentucky's the most intimidating basketball team. UK's a joke. The, per <laughs> the only team that I feel could actually succeed in being the number one basketball team this year is Sullivan University. Now on to the coach's corner. Yes, BB. Are you ready for the coach's corner? Yeah! Men down. Here with Mr. Urban. Mr. Urban, what do you coach? The marching band. How many hours a week does the marching band rehearse? We rehearse anywhere from 9 to 15 hours a week. How important was last week's competition? It was pretty important. It was our one Mid-States contest leading up to championships in November. Um, it's a good gauge for us. It gives the judges a kind of a nice look at our show and, and um, you know, kind of gives us some stuff to work on between now and then. And how did you do? 
We did pretty well. We swept our class, got first place in our class, uh, best percussion overall, best color guard. We were only one-tenth of a point out of finals. How many students is in the marching band? We actually have 46 this year. Is that more or less? Is that pretty good? Uh, yeah, that's, that's more than last year. Last year we had around 30, this year 46. So, you know, we, we, we grew in size, and if we could keep growing, that would be great. So if you have more students, does that mean that you would be able to place better, or does that not really matter? That's sort of the ultimate question for marching band. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people say that the more students you have, the better you are. Um, also, with more students, it's a lot harder to find the smaller mistakes that, that, you know, that you would be able to find with a smaller group. What can students in this school expect from the marching band in the future? Um, I think that they can expect us to grow in size, uh, to become successful, to represent the school in the best way that we know how, um, and to just and to sort of rise in popularity, hopefully, as 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 the years go on. How do you feel about the marching band as a whole this season? Um, we're really young. Um, I think we have maybe four or five seniors four or so juniors and the rest are all freshmen and sophomores so they're young which is you know not great for experience but they are very eager um, and they're very willing to learn so that's great. What are some goals that they have? Uh, some goals we have for this season we want to make mid-states finals uh, we want to we want to rehearse better we want to um, make semifinals for the first time in school history and as always we want to perform at a high level relative to our potential. Okay thank you coach. Thank you. And now we're introducing the Supercharger Buzzer Beater Round. Our, our first school subject, school sports subject, will be Bullet East football going into districts next week and how we think they are going to do. Bullet East is going to be coming out of a bye season, out of a bye week, so they're going to be rested, and they've only lost two games this year. First game they lost was against Boyle, who is still undefeated and is third in the 4A division. Second loss was against Central Hardin, who is also still undefeated and third in the 6A division. Boyd East sits in the 5A division and I think has a great shot in districts against uh, Shelby County, Bullet Central, and North Bullet, teams that have not produced as good of a season as Bullet East has. The great thing about this Bullet East football team is that they're hitting their stride at the perfect time. Going into districts, I have no worries that we will do absolutely fine. I don't worry for the Chargers. Our options for us are win or win. Uh, uh, honestly, I think that coming into districts, it, it will be easier than anything we've ever done. I do not see any team holding up against us. It might be a game with Bullet Central, and that's a maybe considering they're currently 6-0, and even though they have played joke teams. But... In my opinion, we will, we will get all the wins. Our next topic is of the varsity soccer boys team. So as a lot of people have probably heard, they have a pretty close bond between them. You could even call them a brotherhood. Uh, the real question here is, does being brothers with your teammates actually help you play better? The most important thing on a team is definitely the chemistry. The fact that these boys are so close and they spend so much time with each other all, definitely helps them throughout the districts and the regions. Uh, I've gotten a chance to play with them and to feel how they work. And I've noticed that they do work very well together and they have grown as brothers and as players. Um, does it make them a better team? Chemistry is the most important thing you can have for a team. No matter how much talent you have on a team, if you don't have any chemistry, you won't work well together. But that doesn't mean you still don't need talent. I'm going to agree. The talent has to be there, but really when it comes down to it, the most talented team against a decent team with great chemistry is always going to be a close game. So I think it's definitely the brotherhood helps this boys soccer team out. Now for your MVP of the week. Your MVP of the week is Pierce Kelly. With close to 150 all-purpose yards and a 44-21 win over Oldham County, Pierce Kelly takes home the MVP of the week. And up next, we have your play-by-play -play with your very own Jake Wood, Spencer Warren, and Dawn Pretty. Welcome to the play-by-play -play rundown of the week. Over the weekend, Kentucky took on Vandy for their first SEC win in three years. Total scrambles out of the backfield for a 14-yard gain. Later in the game, Kentucky opens up with a play-action pass for a touchdown.
Kentucky got great pressure on Vandy's quarterback all day. Quarterback sneaks, touchdown for Kentucky. Kentucky's secondary played well with three picks on the day. Play on words. I do stuff like that. Derek Gita. Derek Gita. In Derek Jeter's final game at Yankee Stadium, he steps up to the plate and he hits a walk-off. It was his first walk-off since June of 2007. It was a very emotional last game at Yankee Stadium for Derek Jeter. There was even a point during the game where he said that he did not want the ball to be hit to him because he did not know if he could make the play. Now next off, it's Bullies versus Odom County. Connor Polson had success in the passing game. So did Trent Meredith with two receiving touchdowns. Sam Lowe's aggressively sacks the quarterback and gets flagged for it. With a pass from Connor Polson, good to Robert Harley for a touchdown. Thanks for tuning in for the play-by-play -play rundown of the week. Now on to the sports calendar. Round, round, get around, I get around, yeah, get around, round, round, I get around. Good afternoon, this is Tini and Alex with your sports calendar. For the NFL first off, coming off this Sunday, October 5th, we have the Chiefs versus the 49ers, Bengals versus the Patriots, Ravens versus the Colts, and the Cardinals versus Broncos. And then on Monday, October 6th, we had the Seahawks versus the Redskins. And in this week in college football, we have Louisville versus Syracuse, Texas A&M versus Mississippi State, Alabama versus Ole Miss, and Kentucky versus South Carolina. And unfortunately, this week, the Chargers have a bye week. So enjoy your weekend. This has been Teeny and Alex with your sports calendar. I'm Malachi. I'm Ethan. I'm Austin. And I'm Tyler. This was Red Zone Sports Report.